Hey everyone, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. This is your Manus Dry Fire Monday, and I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant with your training tips. Uh, today we're going to work on our hands up position. Ammo is crazy expensive and hard to find, and dry fire is life. I use the Mantis X10 to keep my handgun skills strong, and it makes dry practice fun and challenging. Check it out at the link below. There's two draws that we need to have. I think there's probably more as the armed citizen. Uh, one thing that's entirely different for the armed citizen's mission is that we have to go from concealment. We should go from concealment. It's a tremendous advantage to conceal and hide a gun. All right, which means that our draw stroke has to be practiced a lot. Um, we're going to have to be able to go and get the gun depending on what's going on with our hands. Now, there is no natural hand positions in a gunfight. Uh, you know, if you're in IDPA or you're starting in a hands position down USPSA, they're going to say exactly where your hands would be. This would be silly if I saw a fight coming. I wouldn't put my hands at my side. All right. Now, I do tend to stand around, and this might be my starting position. But if I was engaged and I had to talk to somebody, I'm trying to de-escalate, my hands are going to be in this position. There's a real added advantage in the hands up being like this because we're doing the opposite of what we look for in pre-assault indicators. That we're showing, ourselves, showing the other person our hands are empty and that we pose no threat. But we're also preparing ourselves to fight. So we're communicating two messages. This is not what I want, but I'm prepared to do so if I need to. I'm paying attention closely to you. And then, of course, could go to the cage or I could engage and grab my gun. I could do my striking. I could do my grappling. So my hands are more ready here. This is a more of a middle guard for us. Okay, this would be considered a low guard. I don't think there's a high guard unless somebody would be above us. So, you know, in sword fighting, we have high, middle, and low guards. This one, we're just going to stick with the middle guard. Got to get used to is having these hands in motion. Now, as we practice, we may just put them in this position. Make sure they're not in front of your eyes. You want to be able to see clearly. You want to be able to see the whole person. Okay, now let's talk about this draw real quick. Check the firearm, let's make sure it's safe. Okay, and as I tell my classes, I'm at the greatest risk for mistakes because I do what? I handle guns a lot and frequently. So I always use the same methodology. I lock the slide to the rear, take the magazine out. I physically and visually verify what's happening inside the firearm, make sure it's empty. If there was another person out here, you're the other person. You just got to check it, all right? Unfortunately, you won't be able to stop me because it's not in real time. And then what I'm gonna do is rack the firearm three times. Okay, and now I know there's no rounds out. I have a tap rack train in there, which I use exclusively to make sure I don't pick up a full magazine and insert it into the gun. All right, so now my gun's ready to practice. Okay, now let's get Brian ready to practice too. Let's talk about the methodology of the hands up draw here, all right, or the interview position, or the fence, or the frames, however you want to call it. Uh, those names have, have been around for a long time and they all work and they're all fantastic. But my hands are up. So what I've got to do is clear the garment. Okay, clearing the garment is essential because that's where we see the most uh, fragility in this draw is that's where it breaks down. That's where it's very fragile for people that they can't get the gun out quickly. So we need to have this well organized. Okay? First thing is the hand has to go someplace where it's always going to find something. All right, so instead of going to the hem of the shirt and trying to pull up, since I wear different types of shirts, today I'm wearing a hoodie. As you can see, it is a beautiful December morning. 2021 look at that blue sky behind me but it's also slightly chilly today so i got a hoodie on today so some hoodies are longer some are shorter some are rolled what i'm always going to do is i'm going to go to where my belly button is okay that is the index that will not leave me it will be with me for the rest of my life i know where that is and then my hand's going to go in a north south position because if i grab this way what it does is squeeze the whole garment around me and prevents me from moving the shirt enough where I'll end up grabbing the shirt. So if I go this way, what happens is it, see how it bunches up and I only have to move my elbow a little bit. My hand goes to where they're going to join together and no further. If you go further than that and you draw it to your chin, what happens is when you let go, it comes down quicker. I see a lot of foul draws that way. So we're just going here. We're going to move the, move the shirt out of the way. This hand's coming straight down. I'm using the claw grip, which means I don't drive the thumb in behind. That takes time, creates friction. And then from the side position, once I draw the gun, even though I have that thumb there, I'm going to have to move it out of the way to make the grip again. So simply no advantage the thumb doesn't grip the gun it's these three fingers down here that are gripping the gun and we want to get the the support hand on as soon as possible because that's going to do the majority of gripping hand comes in north south pulls straight up other hand stabs straight down that's got Jelinski's methodology of the stab all right some people circle in i know mike seeklander does gabe white slaps right in you got to practice get on the timer figure out which one works for you 
Now I've got a good grip. The gun's bouncing out and it's going to meet the support hand. The support hand's going to roll in, grip, and then I'm going to drive the gun straight out. Careful back to the holster and everything's good. So hands are in this position. This one moves first. It clears the cover garment. As the cover garment starts to clear, the other hand drives. They come together, they create the grip, and they drive straight out. Now I'm going to practice it in reverse, make sure the orders are good, and put it back in. Now, good thing I checked because my mic wire was in the way. So I would have been driving that gun in there. Make sure your shirt's not in the, inside the holster. As long as you can look down, see the holster's clear, that's a really important thing. Now, if the fight's not over, don't put your gun up. Okay, but if the fight's over, it's important to put it away safely and carefully, or if you're done with training. Let's look at this one more time. So what my hands are doing, they're kind of rolling. They've got a circle. All right, so it looks like this. One goes down, two goes down, they come together. So pop, pop, pop. Okay, so a hand goes boom, boom, boom. That's what it looks like without the gun. Then I'm going to drive here, drive here, and get the grip on it. Now, how do we get better at this? Okay, well, we get a timer out. Okay. This is efficiency training. This is speed training. So therefore, you have to go fast. Uh, my timer has several part times set up. I started at 115. All right, so 1.15, and that sounds kind of slow for some people, but that's my making sure that I move well and draw the gun well. Okay, I do that three times. If it's perfect on three times, I move to the next part time. Next part time for me is a 0.95. Okay, instead of being at a one, some of the drills I I teach and practice and held accountable to need a one second draw, so I put it at 0.95, just slightly lower. Now what I'm going to have to do is get ready to move sooner and be able to get to that gun. Then the next one drops to a 0.85, which is really at the edge of my skill. I'm not going to get it every time, but I want to be pushing a bit. Probably 80-90% of the time I'll get that and I'll see the dot. Then I have one at 0.75, which is outside of my skill range right now, and that's the one that makes me stretch, and it creates efficiency in the body. Body won't tolerate inefficiency over a long period of time in training, right? and that's my sprint. I'm not jogging in this. I'm going as fast as I can. There will be some inaccuracy, and I'm not working about accuracy now. I'm working about efficiency on the draw. So see if that works for you guys. It should be pretty quick. So I have you know, four pars. And if three of them go well, I move the next one and move the next one. And what it usually takes me is somewhere between 20 or 30 draws and I get zoned in. And then you'll never have a cold performance on your draw again. You'll be ready to go. I'd practice hands down. I'd have to practice hands up and be good at that. I'd practice having something in your hand and dropping it. I'd practice drawing with one hand. They're all important. Now, let me not forget my strong side people, okay? Don't want to leave you out. Okay, if you're not carrying appendix. If I have to go over here and get it, it depends on what kind of garment I'm wearing. If I'm wearing a jacket or a fishing vest, then all I do is I take my hands, I drive back, get the gun, and draw it straight back out. Okay, You can use the claw grip, that works great, or you can drive your thumb in, feel it's necessary. But you're driving back and getting it. Now let's talk about people wearing closed garments, because that's how most of us live. How do I get the gun out over here? Uh, I find this to be the slowest draw there is. Closed garment, strong side holster. It's not an opinion. I just see thousands of shooters, and I very seldom see anybody get very low with this draw because it tends to be more complex than the other one. Number one, the gun is further away and back. It's in a weak position for the arm and shoulder, and then you have to draw where you're not particularly flexible or there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of muscle to draw that up. So we got to get good at it. What happens to a lot of people is the left hand gets involved, they put both hands, and the left hand pulls forward as it pulls up. That wraps it over the butt of the gun, and then it's hard to get out. What I do instead is, from the frames position, is I move both hands there, and the right hand goes and gets the shirt and passes it to the left, goes back and gets the gun and is ready to go. So this hand comes here, boom, and off it goes. That's the best compromise. I know some people just grab it and go back in it. That would work too. All right. I just tend to pass it off because I want to give the left hand something to do if it's going to marry the gun. Make sense to you guys? Hope that helps you out a lot. Okay. Act to self-protection, hit the subscribe, hit the like button. Use your manis on this. Your holster draw analysis is crucial to find out the components and look at the graph and see how it is. Keep knocking off hundreds of seconds until you get down to a tenth, and then you'll see real improvement. Remember, you're trying to be better than you were yesterday. You have got to constantly be pushing because the problem is if you just maintain the same skills, they'll begin to erode. I don't know why it is with human beings. We need to be striving. We need to be gaining. We need to have purpose in it. We need to have autonomy in our training. We need to be striving for mastery because we're always getting better. Uh, and then eventually you'll find the edges 
and you'll have to do something new, invent something, or you'll have to really just try to look for thousands of seconds or hundreds of seconds to improve and improve your consistency overall. Okay, Manus is really going to help you with that. All right, I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant, and as always, measure, refine, and perform.